So this year is a good example of exactly what we've been preparing for. We knew it was dry, but we didn't realize the soil was hurting that much. It's not able to hold much moisture. There isn't much soil life. You know, everything we do is to build water holding capacity, filtration, soil cover, all of those things, because we know that a year like this is going to come, and it, here we are. So at 7 o'clock every morning we get together with our crew and have, have a quick coffee and talk about what, you know, what's going to be coming up during that day. You know, basically just make a plan for the day. This year, because the, the dry conditions, our harvest is coming quicker than we like it. So we're just trying to do some maintenance around fields. We like to do weed control and getting equipment out and start getting ready for harvest. Today Alex is loading screenings uh, from our sea cleaning plant. We're cleaning cam Camelina right now. And he takes those screenings down to our neighbor's feed yard. And it's that same herd that will come and graze on our farm. Having cows in, as part of our system is important. You know, they're biological sp spreading machines, right? That's, you know, obviously one of the soil health principles. We've seen improvement from it. I guess what makes us unique is that we built um, a food grade processing facility on our farm. All the products that we grow wind up as a food product. There's a whole bunch of machinery and they all have different jobs of making sure that there's no oil stuck to the grain and there's no rocks, no glass, no dust, you know, so it's just pure seeds. From that point, then we can make flour or sell that grain to other people who maybe do some other process to make food ingredients. It's the worst drought that I can remember. The sugar beets are failing. There's actually weeds coming, so we want to catch the weeds before they go reproductive. When you don't have any rain, you just don't grow any biomass. It's sort of a downward spiral from there. If we can't cover the soil, then it's harder to maintain moisture. So this year is a good example of exactly what we've been preparing for, because we know that a year like this is going to come, and it, here we are. We're seeing a significant difference between our long-term managed fields and some land that we just took over. We are in a field that is new to us. It's the first year that we have farmed this land. Yeah, you can see it's hurting. It needs the rain bad. We find the best way to really know how our crop is doing is to bring the shovel out, dig in the soil, and see what we find. It's not good when you can't get the shovel to go in the ground. There's a tremendous amount of long-term damage we're dealing with here that 80 years of tillage and compaction. I don't see any holes, like any signs of life at all. No. Well, yeah, when you think we can hardly dig into it, same problem for the roots, right? They can't get through it either. Yeah. Imagine the energy it takes just to yeah. root through that. Last year, the farmer had a flax field. It was harvested and the straw was removed, so there was really no cover. We knew it was dry, but we didn't realize the soil was hurting that much. With very little aggregation, it's not able to hold much moisture. There isn't much soil life. So next we're going to go to a field that we've been farming for a lot more years and see how that soil is functioning. Yeah, that's what you call soil armor. I mean, we haven't had much rain, but there's nice soil aggregation. The rain will actually enter the soil. It's as simple as it's just making a bigger sponge, right? That's all we're trying to accomplish. Porosity gives us moisture holding capacity and air exchange and all of the things that make a better sponge. This field's had, you know, I guess lots of diversity overall in rotation. Uh, it had a perennial sequence. One of the important things that maybe doesn't get talked about enough. We started reducing synthetic fertility, even on this field, like in 2011. 
Sometimes getting soils to function is doing less. It's hard as farmers to get our heads around that. Compost has been a huge part of what we do too. It's you know a great way to get a lot of nutrients and biology back to the soil. We'll make an extract and basically just wash that biology out of the compost and then put it in furrow when we seed. And it's just providing life back to the soil. After we make compost, we're never sure what the quality is. So the easiest way to figure that out is using a microscope. I'm looking for diversity more than anything. I want to find bacteria, nematodes, protozoa, a lot of diversity that we can either put back on our land or make an extract and put in furrow. The compost becomes a home for biology to thrive. You've got all this organic matter taken from different places, uh, which helps you get different diversity within it. After years of you know, practices that maybe weren't biologically friendly, we wanted to give back to our soil. So this was a way to replace some of the biology we thought we destroyed. And then from there, our practices are just creating an environment for that biology to thrive. Without biology, it's no longer soil, it's just dirt, it's dead. Biology is what makes soil alive and becomes an environment for a plant to grow and thrive. Not only want that life in your soil but you need an environment created which is a lot of our practices so that it can survive and thrive and do with a lot of work for you. We, we, we felt that um, there was tremendous value and, and health benefits in the grains we grow and we want to be able to share that with as many people as we can and the organic has that model of, of you know of their own stream and I realized that we just have to create our own stream and that's why we invested in that facility and the equipment and the neat spin-off about that is how now we need more people. Now it's in kind of this evolving organism and you know we've got a tremendous amount of good people that are here helping us that are just really bought in. And we've got a long way to go, right? But I think you know we're at we're at the beginning stages of something really good and I'm kind of excited to watch it grow.